So on behalf of the RSM MRD Governing Council, staff and my own behalf, a warm welcome once again to RSM MRD, which is your home. And as many now refer it to it as the home of GIS and remote sensing on the continent, always feel free whenever you are within the precincts of this uh, organization. Indeed, calling RSM MRD a continental geo home is in accord with the vision of its founders who almost 50 years ago envisioned a center that would champion the application of geospatial information and technologies in not only addressing pressing national issues, but also spur development across the continent. So we hope we are living to that ideal and the presence of our governing council members here is testimony to that. It is in line with that vision that the center, together uh, with our esteemed partners, many of whom are here today, that the center has continued to provide services, tools, data, and information derived from Earth observations and allied IC technologies to support decision making in various areas uh, such as uh, agriculture and food security, weather and climate, water resources management, disaster management, land use and ecosystems, land information management, to mention just but a few. This we do through project implementation, and as I said, many of the partners we have here through their presentations and the exhibition that we have, you'll be able to learn some of the important transformative projects that we're implementing across uh, the African continent. We do capacity building uh, both to people already in their jobs, but as you have realized, we also have a growing institute at the center here that is offering cutting edge uh, training in our fields of surveying, cartography, photogrammetry, GIS, etc. The RCTI that has been growing over the past few years and now has a population of over 800 students undertaking different diploma and certificate courses. Uh, besides project implementation and capacity building, we also do work with you to undertake critical research uh, initiatives to answer some of the pressing problems on our continent and in our countries. The focus on resiliency and the incredible challenge that we're all facing uh, in this changing world. Uh, the director mentioned challenges of drought and flood. Um, where I come from in the United States, we have incredible challenges around fires. Um, and as we know, our climate is changing very rapidly and very radically. And frankly, no community is, is spared. These are global challenges. So as we face these global challenges, how can we prepare? How can we work towards this concept of resiliency? How can we find a sustainable future? And as you have all in your own paths come to this concept of remote sensing, of GIS, of geography-based systems, um, I would suggest that this is a critical technology. This is a fundamental technology for the future of humanity, for the well-being of biodiversity on this planet, or the systems that sustain all of us. Quarry Aviation is a wholly owned subsidiary of Kenya Airways PLC. Our mandate is in application of technology, emerging aviation technologies, advanced aviation technologies that will contribute to transforming African communities. So our mission is transforming African communities through sustainable technologies. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you now see where our vision with RCMRD gets points of convergence. At Fahari Aviation, we offer services in aerial mapping, in photogrammetry, in GIS, in cartography, but mostly through use of technology. So what we do is we have the emerging technology of drones 
that fortunately for us in Kenya here has received approval in terms of use uh, regulations for use of civilian drones. So at Fahari Aviation, a company that was formed actually in 2020 at the height of the pandemic, we took drone technology as our first technology of implementation. And now we have services in surveillance, we have services in inspections, we have services in agriculture, conservation, and all aspects that RCTI offers in terms of training. It is our endeavor, as the DG has mentioned, to continue the partnership with RCMRD towards embedding drone technology in all aspects of the regional center. Digital technologies such as geospatial and earth observation technologies are key drivers of sustainable development and economic growth in developing countries such as Kenya. These technologies cut across decision-making support, land and soil suitability and capability analysis, resource allocation, land use planning, revenue collection, and early warning systems for mitigation of disasters and risks, identifying and monitoring natural resource use and propose adequate information for policy-related solutions. Now, that statement is a little loaded, but in a nutshell, with proper data collection, analysis, proper technology, like the one that is being promoted on uh, the uh, geospatial and earth uh, observations, you are able to make the right decisions about a number of things. But most importantly for us that are in the food and nutrition uh, security sector, you will be able to make decisions that are going to go a long way in supporting to address the issues of food and nutrition security. Sometimes in the developing world, mostly, we make decisions that probably are not uh, backed by data. They are not backed by, you know, the precision that you require. What happens at the end of the day? Sometimes you throw resources into wrong places just because you didn't have the right information. And therefore, technologies like this would be good because they will help in the decision making and therefore will be so targeted uh, when we do our um, uh, business of food and nutrition uh, security. This partnership between Digital Earth Africa and RCMRD um, is really um, focused on building and the provision of skills and expertise that is needed for the use of satellite data in Africa. And um, I think uh, on behalf of Digital Earth Africa, um, to indicate as well that uh, moving forward, uh, we do appreciate the partnership and um, our model is, is premised on our delivery model of on, partner, on collaborating with, with implementing partners. Digital at Africa was made possible by Australian innovation using uh, the Open Data Cube that is internationally recognized as a game changer for the use of satellite information to address sustainable development challenges. I stand here today and proud to say now Digital Earth Africa, um, depending on your orientation, I usually say by Africa for Africa, and I know uh, the team will say for Africa by Africa. Digital Earth Africa is now led in Africa with the team um, in Africa. We offer an operational data infrastructure making current and, hist and historical analysis ready satellite data freely available and openly accessible for the entire continent. So as I stand here today and elevate the role of Earth observation and the power of 
translating satellite images into useful decision-making ready information. Um, one cannot overemphasize that um, our challenges as the continent are similar regardless of where in Africa you are placed. We talk of sustainable development goals. Uh, food security is, is number one challenge um, across all the, all the countries in the continent. From sustainably uh, managing the environment and mitigating climate change to developing resources and, under, and unleashing agricultural potential, Africa must overcome a number of challenges to meet the needs of its fast-growing population. And this power of collaboration will ensure that we continue to strengthen our capacity building. Um, we make the difference in the lo respective local and regional areas as well. In fact, such collaborations offer opportunities for countries across the continent to engage and leverage the power that we have you know, with our natural resources as Africa, as the continent. And to date, RCMRD remains a very active and engaged implementing partner. And our commitment to a long-held successful relationship is one that we look forward to nurturing for many years to come. Thank you for welcoming us, DG, Dr. Nkurunziza. And we are, on behalf of Digital Earth Africa, we are looking forward to the next three days. Uh, we're looking forward to engagements, to learnings, and most importantly, capitalizing on the power of collaborations. Um, in my language, um, I will say, Niabonga Gakulu Asante Sana. It gives me great pleasure uh, to stand before you uh, to give a few remarks from IUCN on behalf of my director, uh, Luther Anukur, who couldn't join uh, us today. Uh, but this is sort of a symbol of our long-standing commitment to the partnership that we have with IUC and, uh, with RCMRD and other related uh, partners in this uh, meeting today. Uh, so just briefly, IUCN is um, one of the largest uh, conservation organizations in the world. Uh, we're about to set at the exhibition space, engage with the team, and discuss how you and your country can contribute and benefit from mapping, analysis that are carried out by this team. So I'd like just to end on a personal note by thanking the DG. Uh, 20 years ago, I used to work at uh, USA. It used to be at Kasarani here. This used to be a very small complex. Uh, but seeing this monumental growth is really a fantastic testimony of the important work that you do and the trust and belief and expectation that all these stakeholders have vested on you and uh, you are very uh, dynamic council. So to wish you well in this conference and look forward to productive interaction. Thank you all. For this uh, fifth session of the RCMRD International Conference, and I wish to convey the greeting um, of the Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic Commission for, for Africa. Um, the theme of this year uh, conference reflecting on resilient social systems is very important as Africa uh, accelerates its economic and digital transformation. So today I'm here to say that uh, we are witnessing uh, that African government and other sectors of society have become more increasingly aware of the importance of earth observation, geospatial science and technology as a tool to facilitate spatial data collection, uh, access, analysis and use in the decision making processes, both nationally as we have here this morning and also regionally. I'm also here to say that um, we are seeing an emergence of uh, a community of robust space and geospatial experts. And um, the technology is increasingly becoming the driving force of many applications and services from land administration uh, to natural resource management to agriculture to security to humanitarian and other social challenges. 
I'm also here to say that, uh, unfortunately, despite uh, gains made, spatial information is not yet leveraged to its full potential in the, in the continent. And Africa has compared to other regions uh, of the world, uh, with few notable exceptions, is still lagging beyond. Why? I want us to take the opportunity of uh, this uh, important conference and openly ask ourselves and discuss on what do we see as the main gap and challenge for the uptake of earth observation technology by African country and what deserve uh, priority attention. What are, from our perspective, some of the key elements about the importance of earth observation technology for announcing policy decision by African nation, for purpose in management of our lands, place and, and, and prosperity we want. What type of quick win do we see to stimulate the usage of geospatial science and technology, earth observation for our society and uh, for the management of his uh, resources. What? Why geospatial science and technology is not well introduced into the working environment of uh, African country? Is there any data issues? Any capacity, capacity issues? What? I have no doubt uh, that RCMRG and its related initiatives and program, such as uh, this conference, can help us respond to these queries. As we have seen from previous speaker that uh, for the last 50 years, ACMSD is contributing to heighten national spatial information frameworks and structure for delivering uh, inclusive and holistic information for our society. And empowering our community to do as much as possible by, by themselves. This is, by, by the way, this is also the geospatial vision of the Economic Commission for, for Africa. At ECA, we have started a building with member state and with the support of the United Nations Global Geospatial Information Management, what we call Integrated Geospatial Information Framework. This new paradigm has the assumption that, yes, we can ha advance holistic policy and strategy through a coordinated approach of cooperative management of geospatial information. Yes, again, we can build purpose-oriented data set, structured and comprehensive data foundation that will be consistent, comparable and compatible at the local, national and regional level. We are the regional arm of the United Nations in the, in the African continent. And we are, have been supporting the development of mapping, cartography, national spatial data infrastructure, integrated geospatial frameworks in the continent for the last 50 years. And let me also say, for those who don't know, that the RCMRT has been created under the auspice of the ECA in the 1975. And the shield has grown and has even become more bigger than the, than the father. And as a father, we are very proud of that. We are proud of seeing how uh, uh, the representative of UCN has said it in the right manner, as Archimedes has grown to become something that we all today must be proud of. So let me take the opportunity and ask all of you to give a round of applause to the staff of RCMRD, those who have been here in the past and laid the foundations. And I would like to acknowledge and recognize the former director of RCMRD, Dr. Farah Hussein, the current staff of uh, RCMRD with uh, the uh, ongoing director, Dr. Emmanuel Kurunziza, and also uh, we should recognize those who will be coming in the future. You all young people who are 
at the at the gate to come in. So give ourselves a round of applause. We should be proud today. Thank you very much. About the history of Pasco, uh, because uh, we uh, next year we will have 70 years old. So since 1953, we founded as an aerial photogrammetry uh, company. And uh, maybe probably 1980s, we come here uh, for the uh, JICA project, uh, Kenya Survey Authority as Assistance Project. And uh, we bring the, our experience and uh, technology to uh, share with the Kenya Survey Authority at that time. And after the 21st century, uh, we come here through the various kind of JICA projects. We do it all over the uh, African countries uh, with some, such kind of forestry project and surveying project. And we have various experience. And we have shared the geospatial uh, technology and data processing te technology. And uh, recent decade. So uh, we proceeded to more uh, another uh, industry area that is a satellite data technology. Yes. So why I come here is uh, to share, uh, to introduce the uh, satellite, a uh, Japanese satellite uh, newly launched, uh, will be launched next uh, six months, within six months, uh, it was, uh, not the name is L3. And now, nowadays, uh, AI technology is uh, very available for the geospatial area, industry area. So we have a uh, facilitate and uh, very effective way to process the Japanese uh, various kind of project to apply with AI technology. So, but however, what is AI technology? Is that the brain or the machinery? No, there are various uh, prospects of the AI. So, but however, you, the user and the site people, site engineer, should know the AI. What is the AI technology? And what is the tips on how to use it? How to use more effective way to apply with the uh, actual phenomena on the site? My remarks will focus on three keywords in this year's theme, that is services, resilience, and social systems. Starting with the social aspects, the conference look at social issues at individual, family, community, and societal levels. We are all aware of the humanizing effects of the devastating flooding in Pakistan, drought in the Horn of Africa and tornadoes in the USA. To achieve resilience against such vulnerabilities, it's important that our planning and decision-making processes adopt evidence-based planning. A key question therefore is, how can earth observation and geospatial technology support planning and implementation of robust and resilient social systems. On services, we are living in an information explosion age where data and information sharing is much more open thanks to the internet and the whole array of technologies collecting data about our planet. But to be useful, data must be translated into information that helps to solve problems. Therefore, I do hope that RIG 2022 will also provide a platform for innovative ways to translate data from satellites and other sources to products that solve societal challenges and problems. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, let's try to build our capacity, commit to social action, and foster strategic partnerships and, info and innovation to address the societal challenges we are facing. I now declare RIC 2022 officially open.